Happy Monday, Flosstube. It is Monday, June the 10th, and I am back from a really wonderful weekend, a stitching retreat that I went to this past weekend, organized by my friend, Miss Patty. Uh, lots of you know her. I've done video tours of her house, which has the most spectacular stitching in it. Um, she's the, the creator of the gigantic pillows that uh, many of you are fans of. And it was just a fabulous weekend. I met some wonderful new friends. Um, a couple of people came from really far away. Uh, Myra, hello Myra. It was so wonderful to meet you this weekend and uh, get to see your beautiful stitching. I have um, some info, well I have, I have lots of things to share about Myra's stitching. Uh, I'm not prepared to, to share it today because I'd like to get some more information directly from Myra herself, but it's about Japanese embroidery. And uh, Myra is quite an expert. She's been taking a lot of classes and she brought some of her work to share with us this weekend. And it was, um, it was so beautiful and unique and I'd really, really like an opportunity to share it with Flosstube. So um, I'm, I'm putting that together with Myra's help and hopefully I'll have, um, I'll have a little bit of video up on that for you in next Monday's Flosstube. Um, Kirsten came from Barrie and so it was nice to meet a fellow Canadian from you know a little further north of where I live here in London Ontario and uh, um, we had some friends come and just stay and stitch with us on the Saturday so Joanne and Tracy and Robin and Sarah came out to to stitch with us on the Saturday and it was it was just so much so much fun so much fun uh, I also met two non floss tube watchers. So just in case they happen to, to watch this, I don't want them to think that I forgot them. So Tara and Nancy. Nancy came all the way out from British Columbia. So I think she wins as the person who came from the farthest distance. Uh, so it was just, it was a small retreat, very, very intimate at a lovely, beautiful inn. The food was amazing. So much food. So much food. I don't need to eat for a week, hands down. But uh, I'm going to put in some video clips of our weekend uh, at the end of this video. I Most of them have come from Ginger Gerald because <laughs> we went for a little walk around outside and I had left my camera in the, my phone in the stitching room. And so I just, you know, I was so just enjoying my weekend. I was just enjoying my weekend spending time with my friends and having Gerald there and you know he and I don't get to spend a lot of time together in person so I was just kind of in the moment I didn't do a lot of, of video um, we didn't do a lot of video together we were we were hard at work stitching so the little video and few photos that I have I'll share at the end of this video so uh, to the stitching I will get to that in a minute because I have a couple of giveaways to talk about first. So the first thing to uh, to put up is our Because Monday giveaway, our Because Monday draw. This draw happens over on the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid. And last week's pattern up for grabs was this All Seasons pattern by Bobby Merrick and it's called Water's Edge. And it has that adorable snowman in it. Frankly, I really like the umbrella. I really like the umbrella. Okay, so um, because I am completely unprepared for today's video, I did not pull a number before I started this. So I am going to draw a random number and I'm going to put the winner's name right here. So congratulations if you were the winner of last Monday's giveaway. And I will get this pattern out to you shortly. I have a new pattern up for a giveaway for today. This one is an anniversary small. So if you know someone who, uh, someone special in your family who's celebrating an anniversary or perhaps you are celebrating an anniversary and you would like to stitch a special design to commemorate the special occasion, this is a very lovely pattern. It's a small by JBW Designs and it comes with the, um, it's a, it's a, 
happy anniversary charm that you can choose to attach to the design should you wish. So it says best wishes, um, fill in the number, an anniversary, and then you can fill in the date and the name of the location where the wedding took place. So this is the, this is the chart right there and it's so sweet. It's just delicate and pretty and simple and I really like this. And then the charm that comes with it, it's almost like a small little medallion. So if you can, sorry about the glare, but if you can see that, it just says happy anniversary on it. So then you can choose to attach that to your finished piece. So I think it's really sweet. So I hope you like this. I will post this up on the Facebook group uh, later today once I get this video up. So, yeah, I don't have a lot of notes today. There isn't going to be a from the mailbag section. I have uh, some personal information to share, but I'm going to save that for the end of the video as well. So, uh, but again, no notes today because I just, uh, um, well, I'll explain later. I don't have a lot of time today and I, I had a lot to share. So I wanted to make sure that I got a video up today and uh, I, I think you'll understand later. Okay, so getting to... I actually have a second super special giveaway to talk about today. So late last week, I was contacted by Claire from www.celtichobbies.com. And those of you who have uh, been hanging out with me here for a little while, you'll know that Celtic Hobbies is, as far as I know, she is the only distributor of the landmark tapestries and charts patterns. And so Claire sent me an email late last week and she it, it sort of, it surprised the heck out of me, first of all, because uh, she has offered to, to do a giveaway on, on my channel. So, and in not just one giveaway, but five giveaways. So starting today for the next five weeks, and I'm pretty sure it's five and not six, again, read my comments from before about not prepared for today's video. There are at least five giveaways. Starting with today, we are going to offer a giveaway for one of the charts from the Tapesta Pillows collection. So if you are a fan of my pattern Savon that I've been working on lately, or any of the other, um, if you'll recall last year I shared this, the other five other designs from that series that I have stitched and they're, they're up my staircase. Um, there are 12 patterns total in the collection, six unique patterns, and then the other six are duplicates of the first six, but done in completely different colorways. And they are so much fun to stitch. So I'm gonna share my progress on Savon with you in just a minute because I worked on it this weekend. I love stitching their charts. Their, their charts are, are phenomenal. The pictures are terrible, like the picture on the chart, as is mostly the case with, with these designs. When you see them stitched, you almost can't believe it's the same pattern because they look so entirely different. These patterns are so much fun to stitch. And Claire has so generously offered to give away one chart a week from each of the different landmark collections over the next five weeks. So I'm gonna run this giveaway right here on the YouTube channel to keep it simple. I know that not everybody has the ability to comment on YouTube videos and I do apologize for that up front. I try to offer the giveaways on the various different forms of social media. The Because Monday happens over on the Facebook, the High Tea Sunday alternates in between Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. But to keep it simple, all of these landmark chart giveaways will happen on this channel. So in order to be entered in the draw for this week's giveaway, all you have to do is include the word landmark in your comment. So just somewhere in your comment, just write the word landmark. And then when I go to search for the winner, I'm just gonna, you know, I'll be able to just search for that keyword in your comment. And then what I'll do is I will send your information to Claire, and then Claire is going to mail you the pattern directly. So she's gonna be in charge of all of those details. So I just need to gather up the information for those of you who would like to be entered in the draw. I'll get your information to Claire and she will send you the pattern. Now, now if that wasn't 
good enough. Claire, she wanted, she wanted to say thank you to me for promoting her shop, which, you know, I never asked for it. I love these patterns. I love that she's a small business. I am thrilled to send business her way. And you know, I know it's been a little bit difficulty, difficult. A lot of times the patterns have been out of stock. She has a button on the chart itself. If you're looking for it, if it's out of stock, you can, you can click the button and you can be notified when the chart is back in stock. So she is on it. So even though there's been a little bit of trouble with, with supply and demand, it hasn't been through the fault of Claire. Um, and she really is on the ball taking care of, you know, getting those, those orders in and out as quickly as she can. Um, but she wanted to say thank you. And so she offered um, to donate $100 to a charity of my choice. And uh, I was, I was completely taken aback because it, it just, it was so generous. It was so ex incredibly unexpected and generous that I was, um, I was incredibly touched. So I chose, uh, the muscular dystrophy of Canada charity. Um, muscular dystrophy is a disease that is meaningful to me. My mother-in-law had a form of muscular dystrophy that affected her shoulders. It is a uh, more rare genetic form of muscular dystrophy uh, that she had and her mother had, and it is something that affected our family. So it's a it's a cause that is um, very meaningful to me. And Claire donated a hundred dollars to the Muscular Dystrophy Society of Canada, and she sent me the receipt um, showing me that she had done it. And I, thank you, Claire. Thank you so much. It um, it means a lot so thank you okay so we are moving into whips we're gonna move into whips so because I was talking about Savon I'm going to show you my progress on Savon so I started I started this at the beginning of the weekend and over the course of the weekend I put in almost 700 stitches I am side note I'm becoming slightly addicted to counting stitches. So almost 700, like I'm two, sh two, two stitches shy of 700 stitches. And here's where I am now. So let's see, can we see it all? I think we can. So ta-da! Now as you can see, it's still in my frame. So it might be a little wobbly here. Uh, what did I do? I came up this side here do you see how there is this this line of oatmeal here? I completed the stitching of oatmeal all the way across to the other side, and then I just couldn't resist starting in the new section right there. So filling this in. And I just, I love it so much. I love, love, love it. It's super easy stitching. It is stitching that you can you know, sit there and chat with your friends and just enjoy it. And I love it. I just love it so much. And I, I know I've waxed poetic about landmark tapestry charts before, but really these are some of my favorite things to stitch. Uh, details. I'm stitching that this particular series of designs, I'm stitching it on a 16 count off white Ada with all of the called for DMC colors. There was one chart out of the other five that I've already stitched that I changed colors on, but at the time, this was years and years ago, I didn't write down what I did. I couldn't tell you the conversion even if I tried. But I know this particular one, I'm, I'm using everything that is charted for on 16 count Ada. The violet, uh, not violet, lily, the um, lily that I've stitched. Is it a lily? Yes, I can never remember. I know I've stitched it. It's an iris. It's not a lily. It's a, and I make this mistake every single time. I don't know why. It's an iris. It's a purple iris. I have stitched it. It's beautiful. And I've done that, that chart and I'm doing the subsequent uh, matching sunflower, stained glass sunflower. I'm doing that on an 18 count Ada. Two strands. Okay. So I'm not quite done working on that this month. This 
I was going to use uh, my tiramisu design for the T in the um, acrostic 24 for the June challenge that's being run by Jen of uh, Crooks and Stitches. But uh, I decided to work on my tapesta design instead because it again it really was just perfect retreat stitching I was able to get some stitches in and not not have to frog out a whole lot of stuff because I was easily distracted the other thing that I started this weekend was uh, the chart that is doing pulling double duty for my my June challenge uh, which is the wisdom sampler by the Vermilion Stitchery and this is an oldie this is an oldie you can apparently find this on Etsy um, so if you just did a search for the wisdom sampler and here's the information where is it Vermilion Stitchery so right there I suspect if you google this you should be able to find this chart Donna Jampa, I think was the designer, and I believe someone told me that it is her sister who is selling uh, copies of this now on Etsy. Um, so it says this is from 2002. I thought it was a little earlier than that. But anyways, it's gorgeous. This was gifted to me by Crafty Kim. Now I didn't mention that Crafty Kim was at the retreat because, well, I, you know, she wasn't a new friend that I met, but she was a friend that I was super excited to spend time with at the retreat. She and I have, uh, she hosts retreats in Hamilton, where she is from, and they're day-long stitching retreats at a local community center. So if you're in the southwestern Ontario area and you are interested in meeting new stitchy friends, send me an email and I'm gonna put you in contact with Kim and get you on the Facebook group for that because Kim does an amazing job organizing those day-long stitch-ins and they're so much fun. And so Kim and I decided to start the Wisdom Sampler together this weekend as, uh, as part of our celebration that we were gonna to get to hang out at the retreat and uh, and you know celebrate a new start together which is kind of fun so the wisdom sampler is pulling double duty for me in my June challenge uh, not only am I using it for the N for new start I'm also using this for the F in the word for for friendship because well I think crafty Kim is pretty awesome so F for friendship and N for new start and this weekend I completed 240 stitches which that was what I wanted to accomplish as my new start. And so I've completed the letter N for a new start. And here is my start. So it doesn't look like much, but it's a pretty decent start. I'm stitching this on a 36 count R&R Reproductions fabric. I'm using the called for DMC. However, as Kim pointed out, far too late because I'd already stitched a whole pile of it. She said, what are you going to do about the blended threads? <laughs> and it's one of those moments where you kind of go, oh yeah, I hadn't thought about the blended threads. Well, shoot. So I haven't quite decided yet what I'm going to do about the blended threads because I am stitching this one thread over two, which of course makes blended threads impossible. Uh, and Kim, I hope she puts up a video soon because her progress this weekend on this piece was phenomenal. I mean, it's, I couldn't believe, like she just, she just plowed through a whole section of, she got the, oh, no, I'm not, you know what, that's her, that's for her to share. I'm not going to spoil that for her, but let me just tell you, she really flew on this piece. And so, you know, looking at hers, I'm thinking, Maybe I should just redo it on a bigger fabric and then I could do those blended threads because seeing her blended threads, it, it, it matters, they matter. So I haven't quite decided yet. What I'm going to do is the, blended, the first bit of blended threads happens at the top of this hillside here. And because I already have a portion of that done here, I might go in and um, see if I can find a substitution first that will work 
and if I can then I'll carry on with this particular fabric and if I'm just not happy with it I will probably redo it well we shall see we shall see so those those are my two whips for the week that's mostly what I worked on um, I did some knitting so I'm just gonna share a little bit of knitting with you this is the afghan that I started for my daughter Sarah it's a Brooklyn tweed pattern and I'm knitting this using a Barocco vintage wool which is a, it's a wool acrylic nylon blend but there's 40% wool in it but the mixture itself is it's washable it's a super wash so there is some real wool in it but it because it's a blend it's it's easy care so she can throw it in the washing machine and the dryer and she doesn't have to worry about ruining it and she's been watching me like she knew all about it this is not a surprise I wanted her input I wanted her to love the pattern I wanted her to love the color because I want this to be something that she will use into her adulthood so uh, she helped me choose the pattern and the yarn color and she will have easy care of it so are you ready this is how it's turning out so far and I just love it so I'm showing you the first kind of repeat so there are these cables these small cables that happen and then kind of in the middle of the of the each of the four repeats of the Afghan there is this double double cable there so that happens four or five times across the blanket and then the rest of the pattern are these simple ones that then kind of lead up into the next pattern repeat which I'm just doing now so um, as you can see it's quite long so but very very fun to work on I love it uh, as you can see from my rat's nest here I had to rip out three rows all of my progress from last week I had to rip it all out because I had repeated a row and then didn't realize I'd repeated that row until three rows later where I thought hmm those cables don't look right and if you've ever had to rip out three rows of cables like cables every every five stitches there's a cable five stitches cable five and it was took a while took me a while however I am back on track and I'm glad that I took the time to fix it because well I would not have been happy with it the way it was okay so like I like I said today was going to be a shorter a shorter video I'm not going to do a second segment with the from with a from the mailbag I'm just going to do a really quick shop update right now um, first so I have a couple of new bags in the shop this week and a couple of well one one fabric and all I have to show you of that bag right now is the strap the handle because I'm currently in the middle of making one um, this fabric the paisley so it's a wedge tote and this is this is the strap that goes on the side so I make these first and then um, and then I make the bag so that the strap is ready to go uh, this fabric was the fabric that I used last year for the Seagull Point, one of the kit bags. And because I loved this fabric so much and I wasn't sure how many bags I was going to end up making for the kit last year, uh, I, sometimes I, I do things to excess. If you've met me <laughs> or you've been hanging out with me here for a while, you probably guessed that already. I have a fair bit of this fabric. I have at least five, at least five yards of this fabric left. So um, I have, I'm making wedge totes and they are, I think they're 15% off in the shop. Um, I think. So this bag is on sale. It's a wedge tote. The wedge tote, the medium wedge tote size, it fits an eight inch square Q-snap. Sometimes without a grime guard, I have been able to fit an eight by 11 Q-snap in there, but it's a little snug. It's a little snug. The eight inch square, tons of room. You've got enough room for one of your, if you use those little plastic uh, bobbin boxes, there's enough room for that, the small one, not the big, big one. There's enough room for a bobbin box, there's enough room for your pattern, extra thread, scissors, notion tote, all of that good stuff, and maybe even 
a snack. You could throw that in there too. So those bags are, um, they're on a little bit of a discount in the shop because I have a fair bit of that fabric. So anyways, I'm gonna be making a big bag for myself and if I make a big bag for myself, I will probably cut out. Big bag is, um, you can definitely fit, you'll fit an 11 by 11 inch square in the big wedge tote. Uh, those are also good for sweaters or um, baby afghans, things like that, larger projects. Okay, the other bags that I have that are new, um, you've seen this fabric before. I made this fabric into a, um, a drawstring tote. This is my snail bag. So on the site, we have the Ode to a Slow Knitter drawstring bag. And now we have the Ode to a Slow Stitcher medium flat set. So as you can see, they are snails. So if you're a slow stitcher like me, I now have one of these for myself. I have a, I kept a drawstring for myself and now I have a matching cross stitch tote because I am a slow stitcher and darn it if I'm not going to have a beautiful project bag to keep my whip in for the next five years because I'm slow. So that comes with a matching notions pouch and the lining on that is just a white on white, white on white design and I've got I think I put 10 up um, I think I can do 10 in the next week or so uh, but I have a fair bit of I don't have a ton of that fabric left but I have enough that if you were interested in the large size what I'll do is I'll pop a photo up of the medium size but I'll list it as a large if you would like me to if you would prefer that I make you a large size instead so that's a medium it fits an 8 by 11 Q snap and there's plenty of room for pattern, uh, threads, pouch, notion pouch, etc. It just doesn't have the box bottom, but they open up fairly, you know, I'll show you. So there's plenty of room. You can fit lots of stuff in there. Lots of stuff. The next bag I have gives you an idea of the large size. This is, um, one of my favorite prints and what I'm going to be putting up is practically the end of what I have so here's a little bit of a view of the top very simple and it's my birds so I paired this with a purple zip at the top on the main bag the notions pouch has a white zip and it's got the birds on it as well so this set now the inside of these bags, I have a mix of lining fabrics. So depending on, um, you know, what order I make these in, two of the bags will have this liner, the two of the main bags will have this liner, and then the other, because I only have five. I only have five of these in the large size, and that's all of the cross-stitch bags of this pattern that I have left. I have, um, I can show you actually it's in my sewing pile right in front of me I have uh, the remainder of this print I have slated to make three I can't remember how many because my friend Adrian wanted one and I wanted one too I can't remember how many are left I've put this with uh, gray on the bottom to match the gray in the bird and these are going to be large bags some of them will have straps. Oops, sorry. Some of them will have straps and some of them won't. So the rest of that print is already cut and prepared to make the bags. So the large bags, I've only got five and then that print is gone, it's done. Okay, so the other, um, where did that go? The I showed you the liner that I have. The other liner on the other three bags is a gray with a, with a small dot that will be the liner of the other bags. And that's it, that's it for my shop update. Easy peasy. Uh, so, I said that I had a bit of personal stuff to talk about at the very end of the video, um, and I'm gonna be quick. Last week I mentioned that I was taking my dog, Daria, to the vet. Um, she had a lump on the front of her leg that uh, 
she was limping. She was starting to, sorry, I'm just going to reorganize this or I'm going to have to iron everything. There. Okay, done. Um, she developed a lump on the front of her leg back in February. Three weeks ago now, she started to limp. And so I took her to the vet last week because the limp was getting progressively worse quite quickly. Um, so the vet thought um, she, she did a physical exam and she said, actually, I don't think it's the lump. I think it's her shoulder because she was complaining of pain when she manipulated her shoulder. They did x-rays and that day, um, the, the, the prognosis that first day that I took her to the vet was actually, we think it's just arthritis. I don't think it's much to worry about. Just here's some, you know, here's some pain medi medication for her. Um, just keep an eye on it. This should help, but it's probably arthritis. You know, it's doesn't look to be anything serious. Um, and then she called me back the next day, which was unexpected. Um, and she said, you know, I didn't really, I, I wasn't exactly sure about my diagnosis. I had some hesitation in what I was telling you. So I put the scans up on my vet group that I'm part of and I asked for some opinions of my colleagues and they agreed that it didn't seem quite right and that actually in fact it's not arthritis it is um, the very early stages of some type of cancer bone cancer in her shoulder um, now they didn't they didn't x-ray her back legs which have always given her trouble so uh, fast forward this this was last week so from the heights of oh, it's nothing except arthritis, to the next day, it's bone cancer, it's palliative care, four to six months, best case scenario. Fast forward a week, um, she's not doing well at all. She's actually, she's really, it's, it's quite terrible. Her, it has progressed shockingly fast. I now suspect that it's also in her back legs that they did an x-ray because she's, she's struggling. So um, it might be in the next couple of days. So if I go quiet on the Facebook group or if I don't put out another video on Friday this week, now you know why. And so that's what we're dealing with here and it's stressful and terrible and um, yeah. So anyways, I am gonna go and spend some more time with her in the kitchen. I have the, um, I have the stairs blocked off so that she doesn't try to get down them and get to me because that's what she does. She, if she wakes up and I'm gone, she comes looking for me. And if she falls down the stairs, then it may hasten the next few days to the next few hours. So I'm gonna go in the kitchen now and hang out with her a little bit more when she's uh, awake and then when she's sleeping. I'm probably, <laughs> you're probably gonna see a lot of bags show up on Evertote this week because I have a feeling I'm gonna be doing a lot of sewing um, as a means of distraction. So. Um, I hope you have a great week. I'll keep in touch. Um, I am going to say in, in advance that I appreciate any kind words or thoughts sent my way. And uh, um, I'll check in. I suspect I will not be putting out a Friday video because those are, uh, you know, half hour, 45 minutes of, of personal chit chat. And that I think that's going to be a bit tough this week. So. I'm going to move on and I'm going to take care of things that need to be taken care of around here and just take it one day at a time and enjoy, enjoy the time I have with her now. So thank you very much and I will, I'll see you later. Happy stitching.